The Love Story of Lucy Audubon A young girl followed her husband into the wilds of North America. Lucy Bakewell and John James Audubon were young people in a young nation when they first met. It was in the year 1804, when she was only 16 and he was just two years older. Audubon was a newcomer in the United States. His father had sent him from France to go into business in America. The Audubons owned an estate, called Mill Grove, near Philadelphia. From the first, Audubon took little interest in business. He soon found that the country around Mill Grove was beautiful. The land had not been cleared of trees, and he spent much of his time in the woods, making drawings of birds. Not far from Mill Grove was another great estate, Fatland Ford. It was owned by William Bakewell, an English gentleman. The young Frenchman and the English gentleman met while hunting. They liked each other at once, and Bakewell asked Audubon to visit Fatland Ford whenever he could. John Meets Lucy When Audubon made his first visit, William Bakewell was not at home. But his daughter Lucy, a dark-eyed girl, received the caller and made him welcome. She sent a servant for her father and talked to Audubon while they waited. They had to wait only a short time, but it was long enough for John to fall in love with Lucy, completely and forever. After that day, the two met often, at dances and riding parties. News of all this reached Audubon's father in France. The report was sent by the family agent in America, Francis de Costa. The agent wrote that John James was painting pictures of birds and animals instead of learning to make money. Da Costa also told of the young man's love for an English girl. The father, who did not like English people, stopped sending money to his son. This made John furious, and he went home to France. He knew that he could get his father to understand how he felt about Lucy. At the family home near Nantes, John James was welcomed with joy. He told his father of his love for the English girl. He reported too, that de Costa only wanted to get more money for himself out of the business. In the end, the father agreed to the marriage. A partnership with a sensible, honest Frenchman named Ferdinand Rogier was established for young Audubon. The two men were to return to America and go into trade. Although Audubon wanted only to paint birds and animals, for Lucy he would try very hard to be a man of business. The West called, as always, to bold pioneers. At that time the West meant the Ohio River Valley and the Kentucky Wilderness. To Rogier, it promised a chance to trade, to Audubon it promised a chance to see and paint more birds. On to Kentucky. Together, the two young men traveled westward. In Louisville, Kentucky, then a small town of 1,000 people, they opened a store. Audubon was so sure of their coming success that in March 1808 he returned to Philadelphia to marry Lucy. Lucy had grown up in comfort and safety. She knew nothing of the rough and dangerous life of the wilderness. But she was sure that marriage with her young genius was right for her. If she had any fears, she hid them. She believed in him then, she would always believe in him. And so, on April 8, 1808, the two were married at Fatland Ford. Then they left to begin their life together. The first part of their journey was by stagecoach over rough roads. Then came the 1,000-mile trip down the Ohio River by boat. Every day they went farther into the wilderness. American Wilderness This was America, as we shall never see it again. 
The finest record we have of it is the one Audubon himself made in the years that followed. He painted over 1,000 pictures of birds, all drawn as large as they were in life, and dozens of pictures of wild animals. He also wrote about how and where the birds and animals lived. Business was bad during their early days in Louisville. It grew even worse as Audubon spent more and more time in the woods. Bad years Lucy did the hard work that all pioneer women did. In time, her first child, Victor, was born. When Audubon and Rogier moved farther down the river, to Henderson, Lucy went along without complaining. At Henderson they found only a group of log cabins and fewer than 200 people. In the Audubon cabin, the best piece of furniture was the baby's cradle. The young family was poor and had few comforts. But in later years Audubon wrote, The happiness I knew in Henderson and under the roof of that log cabin can never be forgotten. For six months the partners tried to make a living by selling gunpowder and cloth to other pioneers. But they made very little money. Finally, they decided to go on a trading trip farther west, leaving Lucy and the baby with a neighbor. For nine weeks Audubon was away from her traveling down the Ohio and along the Great Mississippi River. Along the way he spent so much time drawing birds that Rogier grew impatient. At last the men broke up their partnership. Rogier went on to become a successful merchant. Audubon was to follow the birds that called him more and more to the life of a woodsman artist. But first he returned to Henderson and tried again to make a living in trade. In one business after another he found no success. Three more children came. Rosa and Lucy and John. And now grief was added to worry, for the two little girls soon died. Lucy endured the troubles and griefs with fortitude. She still had her husband. She believed in him, and certainly, he worked hard and endlessly. But finally he owed so much money that everything he owned was taken from him except his clothes, his gun and his hundreds of paintings. Lucy gave him comfort and strength. No trouble could put out the light of their love. That love was with him when he went, alone and on foot, back to Louisville to find a means of earning bread for his family. This, he wrote in later years, was the saddest of all my journeys. It was the only time in my life when the thousands of wild birds that flew over my head looked like enemies. I turned my eyes away from them. I almost wished that they had never been born. Lucy Teaches School Audubon began to paint pictures of people, at five dollars apiece, and this brought in a little money for a time. He was able to have his family with him again. But often he left them for months at a time, to follow his dream of drawing all the birds of America. His many failures in business had finally taught him that he was a painter and not a businessman. Lucy believed this too. She knew that she must be the one to earn their bread. Through the twelve years that followed, she worked as a teacher. Sometimes she had a little school of her own. Sometimes she worked in the home of a rich family, teaching their children. While she worked, Audubon was journeying westward and southward, painting people, teaching drawing, but always working hardest on the bird paintings. In the rich, warm country of Louisiana, he found perfect subjects for painting, the beautiful birds of the South. He liked the way people lived in Louisiana too. His family came to be with him, first in New Orleans and later on one of the great estates of Louisiana. There Lucy taught school. John helped by teaching music, 
French, drawing and dancing. He had many pictures of birds, now. As true as science, and as free as art. But how could he get his pictures published? It would cost a fortune to print them in color. Leaving Lucy, Audubon journeyed to Philadelphia. His search for publishers met with no success. He was told to take his drawings to Europe, where art was better understood and the work of engraving was better done. For fourteen months, John did not see Lucy. Then one morning, she looked up from her work in the schoolroom and saw him standing at the door. His clothes were dirty and his hair was uncut. He looked like a beggar. She wrote of him later. He could not stay long, and she didn't try to keep him. Instead, she gave him all the money she had saved. He sailed from New Orleans in May 1826. The first showing of his paintings in England was a success. Then he traveled about England and Scotland with the pictures. Everywhere people were charmed with the paintings and with the painter. It is Mr. Audubon here and Mr. Audubon there. He wrote Lucy. I can only hope they will not make a fool of Mr. Audubon at the last. Hundreds of people came to the public showings of his work. Rich people gave money so that the paintings could be engraved and published. Soon Audubon was famous, he was elected to societies of science and of art. But still, for a while, he had to make money by painting pictures of rich people. I need not tell you. He wrote Lucy. How I long for you every hour I am away from you. If I fail, America will still be my country, and you will still be my wife. But he didn't fail. The years that followed were rich ones, they took Audubon over much of Europe and far into the American West. And they brought him home again to Lucy, now living in a house high above the Hudson River in New York. There, after the many long years of hard work, he began to lose his hold upon life. This too, Lucy had to bear. She would sit by his bed and sing to him the songs he loved best. When he died at the age of sixty-six, he took with him the love of one of the truest women who ever followed the wild, high flight of genius.